Huh? No, no one's in it. It's just I can record for free on Zoom with the district. So anyways. Okay, so the first family is going to be straight lines. Okay, it can be a line uphill, downhill, straight up and down, flat across. We'll talk about all of those options. Okay, but all lines have a slope. So slope is going to be a measurement of the steepness of the line. Okay, and if your line has a positive slope, it should be uphill. So I want you under positive slope to draw a line going uphill. Versus a negative slope should be headed downhill. So your line could be uphill, downhill, or it could be horizontal or vertical. Okay, the acronyms that we're going to use to remember those are HOI and VUX, which you should have seen before. Okay, but go ahead and write horizontal under HOI, vertical under VUX. A horizontal line should cut straight across the page, but it should stay perfectly flat, just like that. Versus a vertical line should be straight up and down, so it should look like that. And then, have y'all seen the hoi bucks before? You've heard those before? Okay, good. So the hoi stands for horizontal line, and then the O is actually a zero for a zero slope. Okay, so if you have a line that's flat across, it doesn't count as positive or negative, it counts as a zero slope. And then your equation is gonna be Y equals and then a number. Your notes are on that back table back there. If you'll just go grab them for me, please. Okay, a vertical line is going to have a slope that starts with U. Do you remember it? Undefined is correct. Very good. It has an undefined slope. And then instead of being a Y equals equation, it's going to be X equals and then a number. So you can tell if it's a hoi or a vux based on the letter that they use in the equation. So looking at those two bottom graphs, what type will this one be? It'll be a hoi or vux. Hoi is correct. So then here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go on the y-axis to that number and then you're just gonna draw a line through that's horizontal. So y equals four would be here. And then I'm just going to cut my line across horizontally. So it should look like that. Okay. Versus for my second example, yes, ma'am? I'll give it to you after. Okay, for my second example, it's an X equals. That means that it's a VUX. And if it's a VUX, then I go to my X value and I draw a vertical line through. So go to negative two right here and then we'll draw it straight up and down. Okay, but we'll remember what I said, for Hoy and Vux, that's not positive or negative, okay? If it's flat, it's a zero slope, this is an undefined slope, okay? And then when you're ready, turn the page. If your line is not horizontal or vertical, it is going to be in the form y equals mx plus v. Does that sound familiar? Okay, y equals mx plus v. So if you'll turn the page, please. Okay, m is gonna stand for, do you remember? Okay, slope is correct, very good. And slope is gonna tell you the rise over run. Do we happen to remember what the B is? Very good. Okay, B is gonna be your Y intercept. Okay, and so if it's not a Hoyer or Vux, then in order for it to be a line, it has to follow this formula, okay? Now, your parent function is gonna be this equation, but with no numbers plugged in. So for the parent equation, I want you to put y equals, 
And then I'm not going to put any numbers in for M or B. I'm just going to keep the X. Okay, so your parent equation or parent function is not going to have any numbers in it. It's going to be the basic shape that any line will follow. So put a dot at zero at the origin. And then your parent graph is going to be a perfect uphill diagonal. So I'm going to put dots in this top corner. And then I'm just going to connect them. So your parent function is just like a regular line, perfect diagonal uphill. Okay, graph doesn't have to look perfect, just do your best. Now, what we're going to talk about in the next two equations is if I do put numbers into my equation, what is that going to do to the graph? How is it going to look different? So when you're ready, take a look at number two, and I want you to tell me what number in question two is the B. It is the six. You are always going to begin with the B, which is a six. So we're going to go to six right here. And then after you begin with the six, you're going to use the M to move to the next point. Okay, now remember that when you're moving to the next point, it's going to be a rise over run. So if my number here is a one half, I'm going to rise one, and then I'm going to run two. So starting from the dot that you placed at six, I want you to count up one box and over two boxes. So up one over two. Up one over two. Okay, then connect your dots with a straight line. It doesn't have to look perfect, just do your best. Now, if you compare that back to our parent function, you're going to notice it's not the exact same graph, okay, but it has features in common. They're both straight lines, okay, and that's just about it, okay, but it's going to follow that same shape. Okay, take a look at number three. What is my B for number three? It doesn't have one because I think somebody over there said it's zero. That's exactly right. So put a plus zero. If you don't have one, that means that you're going to begin where the parent function begins, which is zero. So put your dot here. Remember, we always begin with the B. And then we're going to move to the next point using the M. Now, my M this time is a minus 3. So I want you to put rise over run. And then put a minus 3 there. Now, the problem with this is I know my rise is a negative 3, but I don't have a number in the run spot because it's not a fraction. What can I always put on the bottom of a whole number to turn it into a fraction? One, very good. So if there's nothing there, just put a one on the bottom. And then starting at your zero dot, you're gonna count down three and then to the right one. Down three to the right one. And place your next few dots. So one, two, three, forward one. One, two, three, forward one. Now, since we're just kind of introing into graphing these, we're going to skip those bottom fill in the blanks. We'll come back and cover that next time. So you have already finished the linear family. Go ahead and turn the page. And we're going to do your next family. Okay. So turn the page. The next family is absolute value. Okay, write this down for me. Y equals... And then X is going to go between two bars. So vertical line in front of it and after it. That means absolute value. Does anyone remember the shape of this? It's shaped like a letter, not an S. It's in the title. 
It's a V, okay? So box your V, that's the shape for absolute value. And all your parent graphs are gonna start at zero, zero. So put a dot here at the origin. And then remember, I'm not putting any numbers in to make me have a different slope. So I'm gonna keep that diagonal going. But in order to make it a V, I'm gonna go up this way on this side. And then I'm gonna go up this way on this side. But remember, your parent graphs should be perfect diagonals on both sides. Now, any equation that has those bars in it should have the same shape where it's a V. However, when we put numbers into it, it's going to change how that V looks. So I want you first to underline the H and the number in the bars with X is gonna shift your graph left or right. Whatever number is in the bars with X, you're gonna shift left or right. Now there's one tricky part to this and that because that number is grouped with X and it's inside the bars, you're gonna do the reverse direction. So I'm gonna put here opposite. So normally if it's a plus, I would go to the right, but in this case, I would really go to the left because it's with X inside the bars. Your number at the back is gonna shift your graph up or down. Your number at the back is gonna shift the graph up or down. And then because it is not in the bars, you're gonna do whatever it says. If it says plus go up, minus go down, but that one's not an opposite. Okay, the last number is gonna be this number in the front. And that number is gonna adjust the slope of the V. Okay, the slope or the rise over run, if you wanna put that of the V. Okay, so we're gonna graph a couple of these and see if you have any questions. So look at the first one. In the bars, I have a minus five. Look at your notes. Okay, the number with X controls the left or right shift, but we're gonna do the opposite. So if it's a minus five, which way are we really going? To the right five, very good. Okay, then there's a plus three. So I look back at my notes, the plus threes at the back, that controls my shift up or down. Which way are we going? Up. So on your grid, I want you to count to the right five boxes, then up three boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Is there a number in the very front for the slope? then you're gonna keep it perfect diagonals. So you're gonna take that starting point right here and you're just gonna hit the top corners in both directions. So it's the same shape, it's still a V, but the numbers in those positions moved it to the side and then they moved it up. We're gonna skip B and go to C. So take a look at letter C. First thing I want you to look at is the number inside the bars. What number is inside the bars on letter C? Negative six means I go which way? To the right six. What about the minus three? Down three. So on your graph, I want you to count to the right six and then down three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Then from there, I wanna draw my V. If it's no slope number, we're gonna keep it diagonals, but I see that I do have a slope number this time. What is it in the front? One half. And one half means that I'm going to rise one and then run two. Now, unfortunately, we are kind of on the edge of the graph, so just kind of imagine there are boxes there, okay? So you do this, ready? Up one, over two. Up one, 
over two. And then I'm gonna go back to the center and I'm gonna go up one and two the other way, up and over two the other way so that I have my V. And you'll notice that even though it's not the exact same as the original V, okay, it still has the same shape, basically. Okay, one more like that. Take a look at letter D. Okay, I noticed that I have a plus five. Is that going to shift it left, right, up, or down? Up. Uh, how do I know it's up and not left or right? It's not in the bars. It's got to be in the bars to go left or right. So this is going to shift it up five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then if there's not a number with X, that means that you're not going to move it side to side because they didn't put a number there. Okay, now my slope is what number? Negative two. Negative two. So I want you to put your rise over run here. Negative two is a whole number, which means I can put what on the bottom? A one, very good. So starting at your dot right here, instead of going up two over one, you're gonna go down two and then over one. So go down two over one. And then once you do it a couple times going forward, go back to your center dot and make the other half of the V going down two and over one the other way. And even though your V, some of them are fatter, some of them are skinnier, some of them open up, down, it doesn't matter. They all belong in the absolute family. Okay, all good with that? Turn the page when you're ready. Okay, you've already finished two. We only have two more left. Okay, taking a look at the next page, we are gonna do the quadratic family. Y equals X squared. And then does anyone remember, this one also is shaped like a letter. Do you remember which one? You remember, get it? It's a U? No? Okay. Go to zero, zero. Okay, all your parent functions are going to start in the middle. And then for this one, I want you to go up one over one. But then the next dot is going to be up three and then over one. So after I do my one, one, I'm going to do up one, two, three, one. And that's what's going to make it bent like a U instead of like a V. Other side, up over one, up three over one. And then when you connect your dots, it should look kind of like a U. Like that. All right, now all of the rules that we learned for absolute value, so like moving it side to side, up and down, okay, that stays the same no matter which family you're looking at. So rather than us writing that all out again, I'm just gonna put same rules apply. Okay, if you wanna go back and copy over the rules from the other page, you can. But the only difference is that last time I had bars in my equation versus now, what do I have? Parentheses with a squared. So the parentheses with a squared are gonna make it a U shape, but all the rules stay the same. So let's look at letter A. I have a minus two in parentheses with the X, which way are we shifting? To the right, and what about the minus five? Down five, so I'm gonna to go to the right two, down one, two, three, four, five. To the right two, down five. Then remember that unless they put a slope number in front, your shape is exactly the same. So I'm gonna go up one over one, up three over one. 
So remember, it's one, one, then three, one. So on the other side, one, one, three, one. And that's going to give you your U. Go ahead and skip letter B. We'll go to letter C. <laughs> it's just so many examples now. Okay, go to letter C. Which way should I go, left or right, if there's a plus two in the parentheses? Right. To the left is correct, then what? Up one, so go left two, up one. Now normally, you do your one, one, three, one, you'd be doing it up. Why will I not do that this time? Negative. negative. And so what that negative is gonna do is that's gonna change your slope. It's gonna reflect it over the x-axis. So that instead of my U opening up like the parent function, okay, it's gonna end up opening down. So let me show you what that looks like. You're gonna go down over one, down three over one. So it's the same measurements, but you're doing it in the opposite direction. Then go back to your starter dot and you're gonna go down over one, down three over one. So the negative in front makes parabola open down. Okay. The negative in front is going to make your parabola open down. One more example from this family. Take a look at D. Which way will I shift two boxes? Up, down, left, right, if it's a minus two. Oh, yeah. Down, how do I know it's not to the right? Because it's not inside what? Parentheses. Okay, so we're gonna go down two. That's here. And then will this one open up or down? Down, because why? Negative in the front. Okay, so if that negative's in the front, instead of going up one, one, three, one, you're gonna go down. So I'm gonna go down one over one, down three over one, and then the same thing on the other side. Down over one, and then down three over one. Any questions on that? All right, turn the page, you're on the last family. So we did straight lines, we did Vs, we did Us. The last family is gonna be your square root family. So put Y equals square root X. Put your first starter dot at the origin, zero, zero. Your next dot is gonna be up one over one. Okay, but then your next dot, instead of going up three over one, you're gonna go up one over three. So it's kind of the same measurements, but it's facing the opposite way. So I went up one over one, now I'm gonna go up one over three. And it's kind of like a little hook. Okay, there's not another side to it. It's literally just that piece right there. All the rules are the same. Okay, the same rules apply as the other two families or three families. So take a look at letter A when you're ready. Okay, which way should we shift the first equation? I have a minus two to the right and then the plus one. Up. Very good. So go to the right two, up one. Do I have a slope changer in the front? No, no then it's going to be the exact same shape as this one. So remember how I did that? I went up one over one and then up one over three. Okay, but they should have the exact same shape. You're just moving it around.
Okay, this time we will do example B, but we're gonna change the eight. If we keep it in eight, we end up way off the grid. So I'm just gonna change that to, uh, let's make it a four. That way it'll still fit, okay? So I have a plus five inside the root. Which way are we going? Up, down, left, right? To the left. What about the minus four? Down. So go to the right, five. Two, three, four, five, then down four. One, two, three, four. Do I have a number to adjust the slope to? Nope, then I'm gonna keep it the same. So up over one, up over three. Okay, take a look at question C when you're ready. Seven's gonna put us off the grid, so I'm just gonna conveniently change that to a two. Which way are we shifting the plus two? Up, down, left, right? Up. So go up two. And then normally, don't draw this, okay, but I'm gonna draw the original. Normally, I would go up over one, up over three, and I would draw my graph like that. Am I gonna do that this time? No, because why? Negative. Now remember, the negative flips it down. So sometimes people wanna try to flip this backwards. Don't do that. It's a flip down. So instead of going up and forward one, I'm gonna go down forward one, and then down forward three. Okay, so the red hook that you're seeing there is correct. Okay, the yellow hook is not. That's your original, but then you flip it. Huh? Uh, we're going to just talk about D. Okay, now for D, what do you notice about where the negative is for that one? See how it's inside? So that is where you would flip it backwards. Now, I'm not going to have you actually do it because it doesn't come up on the homework and I don't want to confuse you. Okay, but I'm going to put this would flip graph backwards instead of down, okay? So if you come across a negative, this is mainly for like ACT, SAT, sometimes they'll put the negative on the inside, but if it's a negative on the outside, you should be reflecting down versus a negative on the inside, you'd reflect backwards. Are there any questions about that? Okay, we're going to skip the last page of your notes because I think probably y'all can figure it out. Um, pull out your Chromebooks and log in for me, please, to the Delta Math account that you created last time. Okay, if you want to just start on it, you can, but I was going to do a couple of them with you. Why are we doing that? <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to pull up the first question up here. Okay, once you're logged in, pull up the first question. And it sh we all should have the same question for the first one. Okay, you should see what I see on the board. Now, remember that in your notes, we learned all the different shapes, but do you see that since it's a square root, it already gave you the right shape? Um, it's not in, there's just a good number to it. Did you make four? And you could probably make one. Where is um, okay, so 
Okay, so taking a look at your equation, where's the plus one? Is it inside or outside? It's inside. Then do we do what it says or the opposite? To the to the left, the opposite. So grab green dot to the left one, not the blue dot. Okay, green dot and then to the left one. So look, I'll do it up here if you're a little confused. We're going to grab the green dot and then we're going to slide it to the left one. Now, if you grab a blue dot, it's going to change the slope and you don't want to do that. So if you already messed with your blue dots, hit start over so it'll fix the shape. Green dot, left one. Okay, then you can go ahead and submit. Now, the next question gives you a shape we didn't cover in the notes. But remember, all the shapes have the same rules. So if you go into question two, should look like this. We didn't cover that squiggle graph, right? But it doesn't matter. Where is the plus five? Is it with the X or is it outside? Then what color dot are you going to grab? Green, and where are you going to move it if it's plus five? Up, down, left, or right? Up. So you're going to take your green dot right here, and you're going to push it up five. Should you touch the blue dots? No. Only if there's a slope change, which we're going to cover in a second. So your first two questions should be finished. Okay, now I want you to skip ahead. We're gonna do two more together and then you just have the rest of the class to work. But I want you to pick the same question as me. So in your list over here, I want you to go to transform functions mixed. Counting from the top, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven away. Seventh question. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah. Seventh question, it should look like this. Everybody able to find it? Okay, now notice I see my absolute value bars. That tells me it's shaped like a V, but it's always going to give you the right shape. It's not ever going to like trick you. Okay, what does the one third change on the V? Starts with the S. Slope, very good. Now, if my slope is one third, that means that I want the blue dot to be up one and over three, yes? Look at where my blue dot is. It's up one and over one. So if I want it to be over three, I need to drag that out so that it's up one and over three. Now, real quick, you're not moving it three boxes because it was already over at one. So you're just dragging it like two more. Does that make sense? So you're taking the blue dot to adjust the slope by making it up one and over three. Make sure you grab Oh, good. Okay, you can go ahead and hit submit. Why do I not have to slide the green dot around? Because it doesn't have any extra numbers in the equation that would make it do that. Okay, now before you go on, I'm about to just have you work. Let's pretend that this had a negative in the front. Okay, so look up here just for one second. 
if you have to flip one, which you probably will, you're gonna take your blue dot from positive one and you would drag it down to negative one. So just watch mine. It kind of makes sense when you do it, but take your blue dot if it was negative and just go whoop and then see how it flips. Okay, it's the same for all the other shapes. If you need help, raise your hand. And if you need me to reset one that you got wrong, don't hesitate to ask, I'm happy to do it, okay? You have about 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Oh, okay. And it started over. So the four is the flip, right? So take your blue dot and drag it over. Yeah, you have the four, you can kind of send it out more. So you're in the front, but you're over. It's like, oh, but you want it to be up. And now it's a plus five. Let's do the tower. You said the tower. You said the tower. Yes. Yes. Um, the hash is right Yes. Okay, that's okay. So minus five, which way are we shifting? Uh huh. It's the opposite. Wait, hold on. There we go. So take your green dot, go to the right side, and then the minus two, which way? Sorry. Yep. It's down, Connor. There we go. There we go. I want you to change your plug to that first one you got is that one. You want to drag it up. That would be one here. So that the rise is more. Hold up on the start of them. Take your first lid off and drag it up. There you go, right? Does that make sense? Now that looks like one. Oh, that's great. Right. 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 Got it. Got it. Yeah. And now move it. Well, then I don't have it. How do I get that? Which way is your plus five? If it's in parentheses, you can write it. And if it's on the outside, that means it's up or down. Which way? So, yeah. oh, wait, uh, sorry. Sorry. Hey, I'll talk to you for It's uh, so since it's in bars with the X, you're going to have to go to the left five instead. But before you do that, let's use our You take your first three knots, see how it's at a height of the bar. What is the rise of the big one? I'm definitely a dragon. I'm going to add us to the piece. You still want to see how it's not. I never said it. Yeah, I'll take it back. I don't know. 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 How you know? Uh, yeah. 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 How you make me play twice, twice yeah. in a row? I see. Just want to review. You want to? Yeah. You want to reset it? Oh my God. Let me say Just no. Just that one second. Okay. I'm going to Yes, sir. Okay. Hang on. Just one sec. So we have a small, 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 small